Welcome back friends to another video. Last week I made a video on data driven decisions, but there is a problem that you need to watch out for. There can often be problems in the data. And so in this video, I'm gonna be giving you six examples of common problems with data. All of the problems that we're gonna talk about today can be summarized in one simple concept. Decisions are data plus judgment. We are talking about data-driven decisions, but you never wanna make decisions on data alone. You always need to apply your own judgment. Let's go through some examples. Number one, bias. People make this mistake all the time. People will often have their own agenda, and then they'll find data to support their opinion. These people use data to shut down arguments. They'll say things like, the data says this, so you have to do what I say, end of discussion. The issue is that oftentimes the data can be interpreted in different ways. So you have to be really careful your bias is not influencing the data. Our goal is to get the best decisions. So ideally, you would want the data to be influencing your decision, not the other way around. Number two, errors. A lot of time data just has errors, or you might accidentally have pulled the wrong data from the wrong time period or the wrong department. That is why you should never blindly follow the data. You always want to be double checking for errors. So one common thing that accountants do is they perform a sniff test. You ask yourself the question, does your conclusion smell right? So in this situation, you would pull the data, perform an analysis, arrive at a conclusion, but then you need to take a step back and ask yourself that question. If your conclusions don't seem right or they don't make sense, you should go back and check your data. Three, statistics can be misleading. It is really easy to generate statistics that match an agenda rather than reality, but wrong statistics will not lead to the best decision. So one common example of this is for toothpaste ads that all seem to claim they are recommended by nine out of 10 dentists. For these statistics, we really have to ask ourselves how many dentists were surveyed or was a survey performed fairly or were the dentists pre-selected so they would select the preferred answer? It's easy to create misleading statistics, especially when you're dealing with percentages. So you need to be cautious you do not draw incorrect conclusions. Four, history does not necessarily predict the future. Just because you have historical data does not mean you can use that data to predict the future. For instance, just because you had a certain level of revenue last year does not mean you'll have the same level of revenue next year. Now, of course, history is useful in understanding the future, but you need to be careful when you're drawing conclusions. The obvious example of this is how every single economic recession seems to take everybody completely by surprise. Just because the stock market has been going up does not mean it will keep going up in the future. Five, data may not capture all relevant issues. Many decisions are complex and data sets may be too narrowly defined to support complex decisions where there's multiple stakeholders. For instance, if you're making decisions regarding employee compensation, bonuses, vacation, or training, you can look at data sets like salary or turnover data fairly easily. But the question is, does that data really capture employee morale? Are your employees happy? And will your salary data tell you about happiness? I would argue that's an incomplete data set and may not lead to the correct decision. Six, short-term versus long-term issues. Many time decisions in the short term are different than decisions for the long term. This has long been an issue with developing incentive packages for company management. Stock price and bonuses tend to incentivize short term thinking that will actually harm the company in the long term. This might require different data sets. So these are six common problems with data, but they all show the importance of the original concept. Decisions are data, plus judgment. This is the mindset you need when you approach decisions. Data is a useful tool, 
but it is not the decision. You always need to step in with judgment. There are often computer scientists that are building artificial intelligence machines. And these scientists claim computers will automate all decisions in the future. I always laugh at this because people are forgetting what makes a decision. We need people to step in and use their judgment. You never want to blindly make decisions based on data. Let me use a really simple example. Imagine you're running a manufacturing plant. The plant is making products and generating some toxic waste. So you have to make a decision. Do you pay the cost to properly dispose of the toxic waste? That is expensive. Or do we simply dump the toxic waste into the nearby river? That is cheaper. No one lives on the river, so the only things impacted is the wildlife, and wildlife cannot sue the company for damages. No one will likely find out about the toxic waste dumping. What do you do? The data is telling you that dumping toxic waste will make you the most money. Now you might think this is obvious that of course you don't want to dump toxic waste in the river, but that is an ethical judgment that actually goes against the data that shows your drop in profits. You need to step in and use your judgment to do the right thing. Now I wanna hear from you. If you think that judgment is important in business, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Zach from Wolves and Finance. Let's go out and make some money.